Okay, well, that's the Sunday papers, and we'll go now to our program guest, and the Prime Minister Julia Gillard joins us from our Darwin studios. Prime Minister, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Barry. As the current leader of the Labor Party, do you feel any sense of embarrassment that Mark Latham was once your party leader? <laughs> Well, uh, look, some people take election defeats better than others, Barry, and I think uh, Mark's still struggling a bit. Uh, of course, the decision here of Channel 9 to involve Mark Latham in this campaign in this way is one that the CEO of Channel 9 has now apologised for. Did you feel intimidated, bullied? I made of pretty tough stuff, Barry, but I did think that this was inappropriate. I mean, we're in the middle of an election campaign. I'm the Prime Minister of this country. I'm not a human interest story. And what I'm doing as Prime Minister in this campaign is focusing on the issues that will make a difference for this nation in 5, 10, 15, 20 years' time. I've spent this week talking about further transforming school education, empowering school principals, about keeping teenagers at school by re reforming the family tax benefit system. These are the important issues. These are the things I'm focused on. That's what you expect a Prime Minister to do. But yesterday was yet another major distraction. Do you think you're getting a fair go in this campaign? Look, I've had some hurdles in my way, Barry. I think that's obvious. I'm not going to deny that reality. Uh, but I'm not going to be distracted by the hurdles in my way. I'm going to crash through them and I'm going to keep focused on what matters for the Australian nation, who we will be, where we will be on the 22nd of August. And I'm for jobs. I'm for a strong economy. I'm for a budget surplus. I'm for investing in education. I'm for decent health care. I'm for embracing the challenges of the future, Investing in the national broadband network, tackling climate change. Uh, Mr Abbott, of course, is running a lockdown, careful campaign, very stage managed, doesn't want to show much of himself because if he did, people would realise he knows nothing about the economy, he's still in the embrace of work choices, he wants to cut trades training centres, the things that will build skills for the future. He's had a track record of cutting health care and he stands for cuts in health care again. And he doesn't want to invest in the things that will give us prosperity in the future, like the National Broadband Network. This um, display of uh, unity or attempted display of unity with Kevin Rudd yesterday, do you think the public will buy it? Uh, I had a meeting with Kevin yesterday about campaign strategy and about his involvement in the campaign. I've been very clear if I'm elected as Prime Minister on the 21st of August that Kevin will serve as a senior member of my team. My expectation is that senior members of my team are out campaigning for the re-election of the government. Of course, Kevin is recovering from an operation, uh, but he will be campaigning for the re-election of the government. We discussed that yesterday. I found it a positive, constructive discussion. But you both look like you'd rather be somewhere else. Well, you know, Barry, I'll let others engage in the uh, pop psychology of one still image. Uh, I was in the meeting, Barry. I was in all of it. I was in all of the discussions, and they were positive, focused and constructive. And I can tell you why. Because Kevin is as passionate as I am about making sure that this country has a future with a strong economy, with decent schools and proper health care. He's devoted a lot of his time to achieving just that. He's rightly proud of a number of things he did as Prime Minister. And he has said himself he's not going to stand idly by and uh, let Mr Abbott slide into being Prime Minister when uh, he's got no plan for the economy and no interest in having a plan, ask Peter Costello. He wants to take trades training centres out of schools. He wants to cut GP super clinics, the very services that families rely on. And of course, this nation would fall behind the competitors in our region with Mr Abbott at the helm because we wouldn't be investing in the skills and infrastructure of the future like the National Broadband Network. Uh, so just finally on Kevin Rudd, then what, what, was, what was agreed? What, that, that he would campaign essentially in Queensland? 
Uh, he will be campaigning in a number of electorates. Obviously, he is still recovering from an operation. Uh, so uh, uh, Kevin's ability to do this has some limits. He's got to mind his health. I want to make sure that he gets fit and strong. Obviously, he wants to get fit and strong. Uh, but people should expect to see campaigning, uh, campaigning from Kevin in a number of electorates in the way that other senior members of my team are out campaigning. In other words, not side by side with you, but with the marginal members. Well, as you would have noticed, Barry, uh, time in this campaign is increasingly short. We're entering the last two weeks. Uh, our campaign objective here is to be out around the country in as many places as possible, uh, campaigning with Australians, talking to them about the real issues that matter. And then, of course, on the other side, what we presumably will see is more of the same from Mr Abbott, uh, carefully stage-managed events, words put in his mouth by the spin masters in the Liberal Party, uh, not out meeting any Australian voters or having a discussion with them, and importantly, still refusing to debate me on the economy, because Mr Abbott knows if he's put under scrutiny on the economy, he will not hold up Barry. It will be obvious to everyone what is obvious to his colleagues now, that he can't be trusted on the economy. And a big part of this week was his current colleagues coming out and doubting his judgments about things like paid parental leave. Well, I want to ask you now about the Building Education Revolution program in the Orgel Report, and surely Tony Abbott is not the answer to this question. Uh, the headline should surely be that you spent too much money and too late. Uh, Barry, you're right. Tony Abbott's not the answer to that question because he would have preferred to see Australians on dole queues uh, rather than investing money in Australian schools. Correct. Uh, I made a judgment and the judgment I made I stand by. Uh, we invested in Australian education. That was the right thing to do. We invested to support jobs and keep this country out of recession. That was the right thing to do. Uh, Mr Orgel obviously points to some recommendations for the future all of which I accept. And he says the premium that comes with economic stimulus around 5 to 6 per cent, well, I say I'm for jobs. And if I had to make a choice again between supporting Australian jobs, keeping 200,000 people in the workforce, keeping them in their homes and their families from being shattered by the kind of devastation that comes with unemployment, I'd make that decision again. Have I learned some lessons? Yes, I have. And for the future, part of empowering school principals will mean that we will have more local control and decision-making of the rollout of school capital. But if we can go back to the idea of a stimulus, the majority of the money was, was not spent until after the economy had recovered. Uh, there was The fears of a recession had started to subside by the middle of last year and you'd barely got started at that point. Uh, well, that is not what Mr Orgel finds, Barry. What Mr Orgel finds is that there is uh, clear evidence that the Building the Education Revolution program has been supporting jobs. Uh, and you can look at the statistics in our construction sector, the growth we've seen in employment there, whereas in America, for example, unemployment in construction is more than 20%. Or you can talk to real live Australians like I do. I remember meeting the builder in Perth who'd sent all of his bloke's redundancy notices and was able to rescind those notices because of building the education revolution. Australians in work because of the actions I took as Education Minister and the government took overall to choose investing in jobs and keeping this country sure. out of recession. But at what point Mr you... Abbott would have done the reverse. But at what point do you no longer need a job creation program? It's a $16 billion program, right? There are 2,000 projects still to start, about $7 billion still to be spent when the economy doesn't really need the government to prime the economy any longer. Well, Barry, uh, if you get out there talking to people, there are still uh, flatness and concerns in parts of our economy. Uh, and if you look at how we structured economic stimulus, it is tapering out of the system. We designed it like that. We designed economic stimulus to roll out in waves. Obviously, urgent economic stimulus first through supporting families, through uh, uh, bonuses and the like. Then the mid-range economic stimulus that we've seen in schools and the package 
was calibrated to come out of the system as the private sector economy recovered, and that's exactly what's happening. Compare this nation with countries around the world. We are not in recession. We haven't forced hundreds of thousands of people onto dole queues losing their homes. We haven't uh, given young people uh, the uh, prospect of coming of age in an economy that can't offer them work. We've kept apprenticeship commencement numbers up. We're back at normal rates within two years. Last time we had an economic downturn, it took 13 years. Now, this is an economic set of judgments from this government that I stand behind. And my simple case is this. To be Prime Minister, you've got to make big calls. You've got to show the right judgments. Well, when it got really tough, I and the government showed the right judgments. Mr Abbott would have made the wrong ones. No stimulus, a recession, people on dole queues. Well, what uh, Tony Abbott is apparently doing at, at his campaign launch today is talking about uh, mandatory jail sentences for, uh, for people smugglers and even, it seems, those who harbour illegals. What do you think of that idea? Uh, well, uh, let's just get the facts on the table here. In May this year, legislation went through the Parliament to toughen up on people smugglers, including those people who assist people smugglers, and to particularly toughen up on people smugglers who occasion loss of life or other harm to human beings. So that big crackdown package was done in May. The government put it in the Parliament, and yes, the Liberal Party supported it. Now, as I understand it from today's newspapers, Mr Abbott's come up with a couple of little additional modest measures big crackdown done in May. He's got a couple of other little things he'd like to add. Well, I'm happy to look at those couple of things he would like to add, but the big job was done in May this year by this government. So you're not ruling out mandatory uh, jail sentences then? We've got mandatory jail sentences in the current legislation. Yes, We've got... This, this uh, might also uh, we apply had to, a crackdown. to those... We've got... It might also apply to those who, who harbour illegals. Uh, well, you're talking, uh, you're talking to the government that deliberately expanded the range of offences to include people who assist those who do the people smuggling. And you're talking to the Prime Minister of a government that determined it was appropriate to bring extra penalties to bear when these people who seek to profit off the mir misery of others actually uh, risk or lose human lives. OK, just finally, two weeks to go. Um marginally behind, I think, in most of the polls. What's, what's the mood now inside the party? Uh, well, the, the mood is uh, determined. Uh, I'm going to be out fighting for this. Uh, yes, we've been through a tough period, but what people should expect to see from me over the next two weeks uh, is the policies that will make a difference for them and their families and the future of this country. Thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, Barry.